Well, hey, praise the Lord, Pastor Michael Jakes, and welcome to the Sunday Sermon Series. Once again, coming to you uh, with a word for your heart and for your soul. We pray that all is well with you on this Lord's Day morning. We're streaming right now live over Facebook and YouTube, Periscope, Twitter, and Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. If you go there, you'll find all the podcasts that the Lord has graced us to be able to produce over these years. Amen. Uh, you can also find us. Uh, on the internet by going to our website at that's the word.org. While you're there, uh, you can leave us your contact information, uh, that is your email address, and we will send you out uh, a newsletter just letting you know what's going on uh, in the ministry. Also, while you're there, you can also go to our resource page and download a copy of our brand new ebook entitled Remaining Unmovable uh, Seven keys to quality longevity in Christ. Amen. And so we pray that you will take advantage uh, of this particular resource. I do believe it will be a help uh, to your walk with the Lord. Also, uh, you can go uh, to our YouTube channel, which is That's the Word Ministries. Just go to That's the Word Ministries uh, on YouTube, and that'll bring you right to where we are. And hopefully you can become a subscriber uh, to our channel if you have not done so already. Amen. So we just bless the Lord and thank Him for what He is doing uh, in our midst. Well, this morning we're going to continue uh, in our series uh, entitled "In the Waiting Room." Amen. In the Waiting Room, and we're and uh, we in this particular series uh, we're talking about the fact that we need to learn to trust God, uh, God's timing in our lives. And this morning uh, we want to talk about uh, what happens uh, when there are delays in whatsoever it is that we are waiting for. How should we respond? Amen. And so we pray that you will be able to stay with us. Uh, Don't forget, uh, if you are watching us right now over Facebook, uh, to share out this particular page, uh, that others also uh, may be blessed. We want to always make sure uh, that as many people as possible are able to hear this life-changing message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, my brother Craig. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We just bless the Lord and thank him for what he is doing. Amen. We're going to pray and we're going to get right into this word for this morning. Lord, we bless your name and we thank you once again for giving us this opportunity uh, to come before you. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you might have your way. Lord, speak to our hearts uh, because, Lord, this is something that we all deal with. We all deal with waiting. We all deal with delays. Uh, So, Lord, we pray uh, that you will help us uh, to take in that which you have for us today. Lord, we pray that you will give us clarity of mind and heart and spirit, even as your word goes forth. Lord, draw those who need to hear this word to this place on the world wide web. Lord, whether it be live or on the replay, Lord, we pray you will draw them to this place. Lord, have your way. Bless us together right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen, amen, amen. I want to go to, I want to go to, I want to start in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, and we're going to probably get back to the book of Hebrews, but I want to start here. Hebrews uh, chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. And I want to talk, I want to read verse number 6. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6. I'm reading from the King James Version. Amen. And it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, we're not going to stay there. Like I said, we'll probably get back uh, to Hebrews before it's all said and done. But I wanted to lay that out as a foundation uh, because what we're going to talk about today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the anatomy, the anatomy of a delay. We know that we all have to wait. I'm going to make some statements about waiting, but we know that we all have to have to wait. But when there are delays, how do we respond to delays? And and what and where do these delays come from in the spiritual realm? Where do they come from? Amen. And let me make these statements concerning waiting. Listen, we all number one, we all have to wait. We all have to wait. It is normal. And it is natural for us to wait. And it's not a matter of when we will wait, but it is a matter of how will we wait when we are waiting. Amen. We've come accustomed to this particular phrase in our lives. 
I can't wait. Have you ever uttered those words? I can't wait. Whatever it may be for, wait to go somewhere, wait to leave someplace, wait to see someone, whatever it is, we, we all are prone to say those words, I can't wait. And when we say those words, I can't wait, it speaks to the eagerness and, and the rapidness to which we want whatever it is that we want or whatever it is that, in our case, we're talking about whatever we're praying for. Uh, now, waiting is not always a joyful or a pleasant uh, experience. Waiting, let's take it back to the natural again. Whether you wait, whether you take public transportation, whether you have your own car, you're on the street, on the highway, you know what it means to wait. You have to wait on that bus, you have to wait on that train, you have to sit in traffic in your vehicle. We know what it is to wait, and it is not always something that is uh, desirable, waiting. But here's the thing. Waiting is an absolute necessary part of our spiritual growth. And once again, when it comes to spiritual growth, God takes everything, every experience, every situation, every circumstance, whether it be good, whether it be somewhere in the middle, whether it be bad, whether it be ugly, good, bad, and ugly, no matter what it is, God takes everything that we go through in our lives and he causes it, for, he causes it rather, for he makes it that we can grow from it, whatever it may be. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28, for God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purposes. Even when we have to wait, God can use our waiting time to help grow us and sprout us spiritually. Amen? Every single thing. Now, here's the problem. The failure to wait on God uh, can lead to undesirable consequences. Uh, we read the story of Abraham and Sarah who did not wait as God would have wanted them to. And they went to their maid and, and produced uh, and produced uh, Ishmael, and and the problem between uh, the problem between Isaac and Ishmael still exists today, amen. It still exists today. Uh, we see uh, the problem uh, with King Saul, who was unable uh, to wait for the prophet to return as he said he would. He went ahead and did something that he should not have done, and there were dire circumstances, dire uh, consequences to what Saul did. He had the kingdom taken from him. And so we must understand that when it comes to waiting, we must wait. <laughs> we must wait. Amen. Waiting on God, on the other hand, it yields great blessings. We read about Hannah's prayer uh, when she prayed for her son. And she prayed. Uh, the uh, scripture says that she prayed to herself. Many thought she was crazy. Her own husband said, what's wrong with you? They thought maybe she had been drinking, uh, but she was praying. She wanted a child. She was barren, but the Lord heard her prayer and, and she received a son. Amen. Uh, scripture tells us in, in Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Why does the psalmist say it twice? Because the Lord, when you, once again, as we always say, when, when you see something written, spoken uh, twice or more than twice, God is speaking to us. He's trying to tell us something. Wait, wait, I say on the Lord. Amen. So that's what we should do. Now, we all pray for different things. We pray for the salvation of our family members. Uh, we pray for healing in our own bodies. Uh, we pray for so many uh, different things. We pray that God will change the hearts and minds of people. We pray that God will reveal his will to us. We pray that God will send us a spouse. Uh, there's so many different things that we pray about and that we pray for. Now, when we pray, none of us dare not make any type of demand to God. None of us. I've never, I, I've never yet seen or heard of anyone, and, and hopefully this does not happen, that we demand that God give us what we want and that he give us what we want now. There's an old scene 
from an old movie that I can recall from years ago. Uh, and I will tell you the name of the movie. It's uh, The Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know. I'm I'm an, I'm an old classic movie guy, so forgive me if I throw out names of old movies that probably nobody's ever heard of. But The Little Shop of Horrors. And, and there's a scene in, in the movie where this giant plant just screams out, Feed me now. Feed me now. And that's sort of how we... We, we don't approach God in that way. Lord, give us what we want now. But underneath it all, when we pray for something, when we're praying for an answer, or when we're praying for, uh, once again, whatever it is that we want from the Lord to receive, uh, we don't come at him in that way. But underneath it all, we want an answer now. We don't want to wait for an answer. We want the Lord to save Whomever it is that we're praying for, we want him to we want him to save that person now. And listen, by God's grace and through God's grace, God God can do he can he can answer prayers immediately or once again, he can call for us to wait. And we must learn how to wait. Now, while we wait on the Lord though, there will be delays. And that's what we want to talk about this morning for a few minutes. Uh the anatomy of a delay. Where do these delays come from? And I'm going to tell you this morning that there are, that there are at least three different types of delays that we will encounter in our spiritual life. At least three. Number one, there's the doubting delay. The doubting delay. And the doubting delay is simply when we don't believe. When we don't believe, when somehow that we just don't believe that God is able. It's the Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief syndrome. Yes, we do, but no, we don't. And that type of, that type of faith uh, will not, as the phrase goes, that type of faith will not cut it. Let me talk about three types of faith that we also need. When we're talking about faith, because faith is key in each one of these types of delays, faith is absolutely necessary. And even when we are doubting, once again, what does the scripture say about doubting from the book of James? The book of James says that he who doubts is like the wave of the sea tossed to and fro. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from God. Anything, even an answer. Because I'm doubting, I'm wavering, I'm back and forth. Yes, you can. I don't know. Yes, you can. Maybe you maybe you can. And when we have that type of uh, mindset in our spirit, it shows instability. Instability. Here's the type of faith that we need. We need even if faith. Even if faith. And even if faith, uh, from Daniel chapter number three, verse number 17, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said that they would not bow down. They refused to bow down to that statue. They said that, that God would deliver them. But even if he does not, they still said, listen, we are not going to bow down. We need to have even if faith. Secondly, we need to have even though faith. Even though faith. And even though faith goes back to the book of Habakkuk chapter, chapter number three. Habakkuk chapter three, verse number 17. He says, even though or although of the fig tree. Let's go there real quick. Habakkuk three and verse number 17. Although, or even though the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall uh, fail, and the field shall yield uh, no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd uh, in, the, in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's that even though faith. Even though things don't look, listen, I'm still going to trust. I'm still going to believe. Finally, we need that nevertheless type of faith. Nevertheless type of faith. And that's the type of faith uh, that says, Lord, it may not be what I desire, but I want your will and not my will. Jesus said those words. Jesus says, nevertheless. He said, if it can, if it, if you can let this cup pass from me. Jesus was not reneging. He was not saying, no, I don't want to do this. No, that's not what he that's not what he was saying. Yet it was his. Uh, his his human side was crying out. He knew what he came to do. 
He had said from the very beginning, he came to die. And so when that moment came, he said, if this cup can be passed from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That's the third type of faith that we need. Even if, even though, nevertheless, what type of faith do you have? What type of faith do I have when it comes to waiting on God and letting God be God and letting God's timing be God's timing? We need to move away from the doubts because God is on the throne and he sees and he knows. So that's the first type of faith. Or rather, that's the first type of delay that we experience. That type of faith that we bring, that type of uh, delay that we bring upon ourselves because we will not trust God. That doubting delay. The second type of delay that we deal with is demonic delays. Demonic delays. When you go to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter number 10. Daniel chapter number 10. And we're going to read, let's start reading from verse number 10. Daniel chapter 10, starting in verse number 10. We'll read down to 15. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly loved, greatly beloved. I want you to keep that in mind. A man greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. That's Daniel talking. Verse number 12. Then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard and I am, am come for thy words. What was going on here? Daniel had been praying. Daniel obviously had been praying concerning uh, how, how things would go with his people. He was a great man of God, a, a man who God gave great insight to. He had the gift of prophecy. As we speak about in the New Testament, the gift of prophecy. God had had given this man this gift of prophecy to be able to foretell and speak upon things that would yet take place many, many years down. And he was preparing him, he was preparing him for a vision that he would receive, would be, which would be one of the most vivid uh, visions and precise visions uh, that we find in the entire Bible. So precise, these next, uh, this next chapter, chapter number 11, so precise uh, that some some have even said that, that this part of, of the book of Daniel was written after the fact because it's so precise. How, how, could, how could he predict all these things to come as they did and they came to pass just because God is omnipotent, because God is omniscient and he simply gifted this man to prophesy what would happen and it certainly did. Chapter number 11 speaks about speaks about uh, the, the Alexander the Great and his kingdom. And, and it, it is so vivid and so powerful. Uh, many believe that there must have been something to it. No, God spoke through this man and told him exactly what would happen. But here we see in verse number 12, he says, From the first day, from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, he says, I'm here and I have your answer. I have your answer. But here is what happened. Verse number 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. Below Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Satan the prince and the power of the air. The spiritual wickedness in high places that we speak about in the book of Ephesians chapter number six. All of these forces congealed and came against uh, this angel who was coming with the answer to Daniel's prayer. The, the angel more or less may have understood in some way the 
uh, uh, the power of this particular vision that was coming up. And he did everything to distract and to keep this vision from becoming a reality to Daniel. He did all he could. And so there was spiritual conflict, a conflict that is still taking place in the heaven, in the heavenlies. Yes, there is a battle taking place above your head and mine. There is a spiritual battle taking place in the heavenly places daily. And that battle is taking place over us, over our salvation, over the things that concern us. But here we see that as these uh, demonic forces came to intimidate, came to attack, came to block, as they came, Michael the archangel, Michael the archangel comes and he helps, uh, and he helps this particular angel. Now I am coming, verse number 14, and this took place for three weeks. The answer was on its way immediately, but for three weeks, this conflict took place. And in verse number 14, now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. He was telling him, listen, what I'm going to tell you is not going to take place now. It's for another time. It's for another day, but it will take place. But I'm going to reveal these things to you that the Lord obviously has given to us to reveal to you. Satan didn't want any part of it because these visions that were taking place and, and in, in here in the book of Daniel, he talks about the, the prince of Persia. Uh, and, and once again, it, it gives us some insight into what, what once again is taking place uh, in the heavenlies. Uh, it, seems to, it seems to make a point that there are demonic beings that are set over places. I don't get into this very much, but it seems, uh, it seems to be saying that there are these uh, demonic forces that are in place over certain territories, over certain governments. Uh, there are angelic forces over these same governments also, and they fight, and they go against one another. And that is what had taken place right here. And even when it comes to something simple, like the answer to your prayer, the answer to your prayer, the answer to my prayer, what God wants to show, what God wants to reveal, or what God wants to do, uh, there is going to be, and not that they will ever win, because they cannot, but there will always be the enemy trying to keep that which the Lord has for you and I. The enemy will try to block it with all that he can. And he will do this in many ways. What did we talk about uh, just a few minutes ago? The doubt. He will try to uh, put doubt and fear and frustration and all sorts of things in your pathway and in my pathway that we will not believe God, that we will not trust God. That's what the enemy does. And here we see that Daniel was waiting. He was ready to receive what God had for him. He was ready to receive the understanding that God wanted to reveal to him, yet there was this conflict. And yes, I do believe that behind the scenes, unbeknownst to us, there is conflict many times uh, when the Lord wants to bring something to you. Not that, the end, that God can't just do whatever he wants to do. But once again, there's a purpose for the waiting many times. And God allows this conflict uh, to take place. He could overpower and overrule and do whatever he wants immediately. But he allowed this conflict, once again, the waiting. The waiting is a means that God uses to grow us, to strengthen us. We read over and over again, over and over again in scripture, how when we wait on the Lord, we will renew our strength. We shall mount up with wings of eagles. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. So there's great benefit in waiting on the Lord. So even if there is delay, wait on the Lord. He will give you the strength that you need. Amen. We need to trust in his word. What do we read in Psalm 27, 14? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's what it says. Uh, Psalm 39 and verse number seven and eight. And now, Lord, what 
do I wait for? My hope is in you. My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Lord, my hope is in you completely. And that's what we need to do. While we wait, trust. While we wait, worship. That's how we get around and away from the doubt. But yes, there will be demonic delays. Demonic delays. Thirdly, there are divine delays. Divine delays. I want to bring you to the book of John. John chapter number 11. John chapter number 11. I want to start reading uh, in verse, let me start reading in verse number one. We'll read several verses here in the book of uh, of John 11. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. This is laying the laying out the story. Verse number three. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. There's something about when I keep reading the fact that he loves. We saw earlier when we read in Daniel, greatly beloved, greatly beloved. Here he says that Jesus, it says that Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He loved them. Listen, he loves us. He does not want to see us suffer. He doesn't want to see us in pain. Yet these things do happen. Yet these things do come upon us. And by his grace and by his mercy, he allows these things that we do not invite into our lives voluntarily. He allows these things. He causes these things to make us grow. That's what he does. Let me go to verse number six. And verse number six is very telling. Because look what it says. It says, first of all, he loves them. He know, He's told that his, his friend that he loves is sick. And he knows, he says, it's not unto death. But here's what happened in verse number six. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, what did he do? Did he rush Did he rush to his side to be with him? No, he didn't. He abode two days still in the same place where he was. He stayed another two days where he was, knowing that his friend was sick unto death. He was on the verge of dying. And he didn't run to him. He didn't go to him. Why? Why? Well, it goes on. It goes on. And I want to go down to verse number 21. Jesus finally does arrive. He arrives. After he dies. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou has been here, my brother had not died. If you would have come when you found out, my brother would still be alive. You would have touched him. You would have healed him. Okay? But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. She had, she had faith. But she was she was giving an honest, an honest statement of her concern. If you would have come sooner, he would still be here. And then Jesus says, your brother shall rise again. Your brother shall rise again. You see, sometimes the Lord has us to wait because there's a greater purpose in our waiting. What does he say here? He says, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Sometimes we have to wait so that God will be glorified. So that God will be glorified. We have to wait. Yes. And that's exactly what happens here. We go. We continue. Uh, let's go to verse. Let's jump down to verse number 33. Let's go to verse 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, 
if thou has been here, my brother had not died. Mary is now expressing the same thing that her sister Martha had said. In verse number 33, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Jesus loved his people. He loved his people. We read about Jesus' love for his people uh, when Jesus came into Jerusalem on in the triumphal entry, when he came into Jerusalem uh, on a donkey. And he after that after that event was completed, scripture says he looked out over Jerusalem and he wept over Jerusalem. And he wept because he realized that the people were going to experience some things all because of their rejection of him. Jerusalem would be uh, Jerusalem would be torn down and, and sacked and destroyed uh, several years from that point in time. And he knew what would take place all because they would not believe. He said he would have taken them uh, like a hen uh, takes her chicks. He loved them, but they did not recognize him as their Messiah. And so when he sees them uh, sad, when he sees them mourning, he groans in his own spirit. How do you think Christ feels when we are undergoing and we are overwhelmed? The Bible says he has been he has been touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows pain. He knows sorrow. He knows it. Isaiah tells us this. He's acquainted uh, with our grief. He knows all about it. Verse number 34. And said, Where have ye laid him? They say unto him, Lord, come and see. And here we see the, the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. He wept. Crying over the death of a close friend. A close friend. And it goes, let's jump down to verse number 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, comes to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away ye the stone. Mary, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he has been dead four days. Then said, then saith, Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that thou wouldest be believe, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? This is so that God would be glorified. That's why this is happening. That's why you had to wait so that you could see that I am able. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes there's a delay so that we will know that God is able. He is absolutely able. And he finally says, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth. I've heard it said, I've heard it said many times, and, and I tend to agree with it, that if Christ had not have said Lazarus' name, everybody would have came out of the grave. But he said, Lazarus, come forth. If he would have just said, come out, everybody would have got up. Amen? That's just a sidebar, but I do believe that statement is so, that's so powerful and so true. And so what he's telling, uh, what he's telling Mary and Martha here, you need to rely upon me. You need to, listen, don't you remember the promise? Don't you remember the word that I told you? Don't don't you remember? Uh, uh, don't you recall? Don't you recall our conversation? And, and, and now that you have remembered, and now that you recall, listen. You need to you need to rely upon me, rely upon what I've said, and rest in the promise. Remember, recall, rely, rest, rest on the promise. If he said it, he will bring it to pass. If he said it, he will bring it to pass. And so there you have the different types of delays. Doubting delays that we bring upon ourselves. Demonic delays. The enemy trying to frustrate the plan of God. And that's what he will do. Throughout our life, he is going to try and frustrate the plan of God for our lives. Daily. He will do this daily trying to get you to move away from God's will, to perform his will. Remember, that's what Satan wants from the beginning. If you would only, he told Jesus, he says, I will give you all the kingdoms in the world 
if you will just bow down and worship me. That's all that Satan wants. He just wants a little bit, a little attention. He just wants a little, he, 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 he just wants somebody to do something that he says. That's all he wants, but you don't give it to him. You don't give it to him. You only, only thing that you are bound to give to the devil is disobedience. Give him disobedience and always do what the devil hates. Always do what the devil hates. Said it many times before. If you know that the devil doesn't like something, you know that this is not something that the devil, you don't have to walk around thinking about the devil. No, don't walk around with the devil in your mind. What should I do today that will uh, that will hurt the devil? No, you don't have to walk around that way. But once again, doing the will of God is going to upset and frustrate the devil. You keep doing what God has spoken. He will be there to do what he does, but we must remain steadfast and unmovable. And finally, we have those divine delays put in place by God. Once again, each one of these types of delays, each one, we can be strengthened and empowered and we must exhibit faith. Even when we are doubting, don't allow the doubt uh, to, to pull you out of faith in God. There's an old song we used to sing, old song I used to sing. Faith in God can move a mighty mountain. Faith can calm a troubled sea. Faith will make a desert like a fountain. Faith will give the victory. Have faith in God. We need to have faith in God. Have faith in God for deliverance. Have faith in God. That's, that is where our faith should be. In him completely. But the devil will come. The devil will come. Don't doubt. Don't bring instability into your life. Those divine delays, demonic delays, doubting delays, trust God. Trust God. Daniel stayed right where he was. Three weeks in waiting, praying, uh, some sort of limited fast that he was on. He was eating bread. It wasn't. It wasn't the typical fast where he just didn't eat at all. He was eating. He he wasn't eating pleasant food. He was eating bread. Scripture says. Um, but he fasted. He prayed, and he waited, trusting God. Going back to Hebrews, uh, chapter number eleven, and verse number six. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder, a rewarder for those who seek after him diligently. Are you seeking him diligently? Or while you're waiting on God, are you tempted to give up? Jesus spoke uh, in Luke chapter number 18. Let's go there real quick as we uh, begin to close it out this morning. Luke chapter number 18. Luke chapter 18 and verse uh, number one, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We won't go into the parable, but once again, that's what this parable is all about. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. So if you're praying, if you're praying for an answer, if you're praying for someone's salvation, if you're praying for healing, no matter what you are praying for, do not give up. You shall reap if you faint not. Do not give up. Continue to trust God at all times. And I know, and I know it's a difficult sell sometimes, and I know it can be difficult, but wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. It, it Listen, Listen, I've seen God do some wonderful things. I couldn't think of the right word. Wonderful, fantastic, great. I've seen God do some great things in the lives of individuals uh, over the years. Listen, God saves. He saves. He changes. And when he saves, he changes. He changes completely. Listen, 
when the Lord changes a life, the Bible says that they become brand new, brand new. And that's awesome. That's powerful. We become new creations in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things become new. That's not perfection. That's not perfection at all. It's just a brand new life has been begun because the Holy Spirit has now come in to that life. And that makes that person a new creation in Christ. So no matter what you're praying about, no matter what you're praying for, continue to trust God. Continue to trust God. I've heard stories about people who've been praying for individuals to be saved for years, for years, and they get saved. But once again, it's leaving it in God's hands. It's leaving it in God's hands. Let God work and move at his own time, in his own pace. And that's, that's the part that gets us. God has to work at his own pace. Ah, we want it now. Come on, Lord. I want, come on, I want to see it. I, Lord, oh, come, no, 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 no. Let God move in his own way. Don't jump ahead. Don't try to, don't try to uh, uh, get ahead of God and do something uncalled for. Let God work. He knows what he's doing. And many times, most of the times, we don't. Let God work. Let God work. Amen. Lord, we bless your name today. We thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that your word is not bound. And Lord, we know that your word will accomplish the purpose wherewith it is sent. Lord, we pray that you will speak to those under the sound of your word even today. Lord, we pray that it will speak to the hearts uh, of those who know you. And Lord, for the in the hearts of those who don't know you, Lord, I pray that you will have your way. Speak as only you can speak. Help us, Lord, to wait upon the Lord that we might renew our strength. This is one of the blessings of waiting on you. Lord, we need for you to have your way. And Lord, we need to trust you. Lord, we know that there will be divine delays. Lord, delays that you have set forth for a purpose, that you have orchestrated. Lord, we know that there will be demonic delays. The enemy does not want uh, to, for you to reveal that which we need to know. He doesn't want that. And Lord, we know that we bring some delays upon ourselves because we doubt. Lord, through it all, help us to believe. Lord, we trust you today. Lord, have your way. Lord, if Lord, we know that there may be some watching right now. And listen, if you're watching right now, if you're listening right now, and you don't know the Lord, you're not a Christian, you're not born again, but you sense conviction in your heart that you need to give your heart to Jesus. The Lord is here. The Lord is here and he will save. He's waiting. We're talking about waiting. He's waiting for you, even right now. If you don't know the Lord, just pray this prayer. There's no magic in this prayer. But if you say this prayer in faith, we've been talking about faith. If you say this prayer, believing, then he will save you. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, just repeat these words. If you don't know the Lord, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me. Wash me. I am sorry. Lord, your word declares that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. Lord, I believe your word. Thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. If you prayed that prayer, uh, drop me a line. At our website, that's the word.org. Just let us know you prayed the prayer and we'll get out some material to you to help you as you begin your walk with the Lord. Amen. Shout out to those of you who are listening uh, or watching over YouTube. God bless you, uh, Sherry. Uh, God bless you, uh, Nancy Sabedo. God bless you. God bless you, Craig, over on YouTube or over on Facebook. God bless you. God bless all those who will watch and who will watch. Uh, later on, we know that it's, this is a Sunday morning and many are in their, in their perspective 
churches at this moment, but we we thank you all for watching and, and being with us. Uh, just want to remind you that tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow night we'll be back here uh, once again uh, with our Monday night Bible study uh, known as the Line by Line podcast. We'll be here and we'll be going through uh, the book of, we're, we're continuing rather, in the book of First Thessalonians. And here uh, in the in the book of First uh, Thessalonians, we'll be dropping down to chapter number five, chapter number five, and in chapter in chapter number five, he's going to continue where he left off in chapter number four. The last words in chapter number four, where he says, uh, "Comfort one another with these words." He's going to continue in chapter five, once again talking about the coming of the Lord. So that's tomorrow night. At 7 o'clock p.m. Hope, hope you can join us there. Tuesday night. Tuesday night, we will conclude our series entitled The Times. The Times. We're examining the state of this present world in the light of Scripture. So we hope that you can join us at 8.30 on Tuesday night. Amen. And then on Wednesday night, we are continuing uh, with our first principles of the Christian life in our Cutting and Right Bible study. Uh, we will continue talking about the Holy Spirit and you. We're going to finish off talking about uh, talking about the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. And then we're going to go and talk about some of the things that we need to avoid as believers when it comes to the Holy Spirit. There are several things that we need to move ourselves away from because the Holy Spirit is very sensitive. Amen. And so we pray that you'll be able to join us then. That's on Wednesday night. So all in all, we pray that this ministry uh, is a help to your Christian life. Uh, this ministry exists uh, to lead uh, people to Christ who don't know the Lord and also to help teach uh, those who do know the Lord and, and nurture them in the word of the Lord. Amen. We want you to pick up your Bible and, and learn what the Bible says. Amen. You can go to our website at that's the word uh, dot org leave us your contact information we'll send you out our newsletter letting you know what's going on in the ministry uh, you can also go to our resource page and download a copy of our ebook entitled uh, remaining unmovable seven uh, keys to quality longevity in christ that's at our website and you can also uh, be reminded that we have written a book uh, entitled the Lights in the Windows, Eight Basic and Powerful Principles on Evangelism. It is available on Amazon.com. There is a link on our website that will take you there if you uh, would desire to do so. Amen. You can also find all of our podcasts uh, on these particular podcast platforms that you see below, uh, streaming. Uh, and there are others, but we just put these uh, just to let you know that this ministry uh, is going across the United States and around the world. Shout out to those of you who do listen in on Spreaker.com. Uh, we see you. We thank you for your support. We thank you for downloading uh, our podcast, and we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you where you are. Amen. So God is good, and he is moving, and he is working, and we pray that you will be with us and continue to support us as we continue to, to spread the gospel to those who need to hear it. Amen. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Hopefully you can join us tomorrow night for the Monday Night Bible Study. The Line by Line podcast will be here at 7 o'clock p.m. Until then, this is me. That's you. We'll see you next time. May God bless you.